The tall boy tells an important and moving story about the fragility and resilience of children in war. In it, three boys, a 15-year-old Czech, a 14-year-old Pole, and a 12-year-old Italian, have been swept up by American Army units in the final years of World War II and outfitted as GI mascots. They wear cut-down U.S. Army fatigues, speak English in the accents of the G.I.s who adopted them, and want to follow their units home to the U.S. But as the G.I.s are being shipped back stateside, the boys are dumped at a children's displaced persons camp in Bavaria, run by an American relief team. The matron of this temporary orphanage is bound by regulations to try to repatriate the children. The United States has yet to open its doors to more than a tiny trickle of refugees. But the boys have their hearts set on America. In Simon Bent's dramatization, the story is told by the American matron of the Camp for Unaccompanied Children. And through her eyes, we relive the boys' struggles to find a future for themselves in the aftermath of World War II. I avoid eye contact. Turn my attention to the smaller boy. What do they call you, Sonny? That Janusz goes looking for the other boy. He looks for him in the outbuildings, in the barns and stables, and down the fields that lie behind the house. He finds him sitting by the stream. His back and its khaki shirt turned against the fields and against the house, against all of us, in opposition. You just goes up there and tells you your name and everything, then you got a chance. You got the same chance as Anzio and me. Nuts. The boy doesn't turn, his feet hanging in the cool running water. She fills out the papers you gotta have. And if they finds out for sure that you got nobody of your folks left back where you come from, then you got a chance. And I believes in the tooth fairy. Have a butt? No, no thanks. Well, I got a deal lined up. I've been looking around, contacting people in the area, natives. You want in on it? I got it fixed up with a crop down the road. What kind of a deal? I'm going over the hill. He draws his feet up from the water. All the good guys that come here, they don't stay. I got that straight from the crops. All this here kid stuff. Don't let them give you the run around. Swing, slide, sand piles. Standing in line for a bowl of grape nuts? I'm through with that kind of crap. I'm 14. I got tired of hanging my stocking up for Christmas years ago. Are you going back where you come from? Do I look like a dope? I come from Poland once, but that don't mean I'm going back there. I've been two and a half years with the American Army, and I got my campaign ribbons and my overseas service stripes. I'm going where things is easier. You with me? No, I don't think we could break out of this kid joint together. You and me, we don't need Pee Wee. Well, the sergeant I was with, the Lone Ranger and Toto, we've been working together since 44. When I get over there to Tennessee, I can start right in working with him again. Yeah, sure. So I'll stick around here until the papers comes through. Like a good little boy. Why not? Do I look like I was born yesterday? No, my papers are coming through. Well, I know they will. Charlie said he'd fix it for me. Yeah, yeah. Look, kid. I seen action with three different outfits. I done everything every son of a bitch in the army ever done. I done Peter Parade and had my broads and wrote my own Saturday night passes out. And sure, they was all gonna take me home with them. Oh, 
goddamn army was going to see to it personally that I got Z-eyed when the rest of them was. Three times I made it as far as the gangplank of a troop ship, but never any fighter. Sure, they'll wave to you from the deck when their boat pulls out. Sure, when they get home, they'll send you a postcard of the Statue of Liberty. Sure, they'll tell you to run along to one of these lousy kid centers where they'll fix your immigration papers up, for sure. Hell, I ain't asking no favors of nobody. Been two and a half years with the American Army. I'm no immigrant. Now look, kid. I'll let you in on this deal. We could make a break together. No, I don't know. This crop down the road, he's got a nice little racket going with the Army. Acting as a go-between for the local big shots who don't want to get their hands dirty trading their jewels and schnapps on the black market. This army truck, it comes down from Frankfurt at night, maybe two, three times in a week, loaded with lifted coffee and cocoa. Lifted from where? The Army Depot. But that ain't the important thing. The important thing is this truck and what I'm aiming to do with it. Wow, what you gonna do? I'm gonna hop that truck back to Frankfurt. Maybe tonight. And maybe tomorrow night. Crop's fixing it up for me. Well, what'll you do once you get to Frankfurt? The truck drops you off at the airstrip. By that time, it's maybe three, four in the morning, and the MPs is groggy. You slip in and jump on a transat plane while they're loading it. Next stop's Gander, and then New York!